Hey, what's going on, people? Hope you guys are doing good. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the Asus ZenBook A14. I've been using this laptop for well over a month now, and I partnered with Asus to tell you all about my experience, as well as a few new AI features that I built into Windows Copilot. So let's go ahead and dive into this video. The ZenBook A14 that I have here is in the Zabriskie colorway. This thing is beautiful. It looks like a desert storm or dune tan. Uh, of course, it's made of seraluminum. If you're unfamiliar with this material, let me break it down. Asus seraluminum is a proprietary material that combines the lightness and malleability of aluminum with the hardness and resilience of ceramic. It's achieved through a process called ceramization, where aluminum is modified to gain ceramic-like properties, resulting in a material that's both lightweight and durable. And what's really crazy about this entire process, when compared to something like ionization, where they're using acid in order to achieve a specific color or texture, there's no acid involved in the manufacturing of these laptops. So in order to achieve these different colorways or different textures, they're basically increasing the voltage in the water. And when combined with the minerals that they're using, you get various colors and shades. It's a pretty crazy process, but the results speak for themselves because Asus has been on fire lately and they've been making some of the best looking laptops on the market. I honestly can't get over how lightweight and portable this laptop is. I mean, based on my usage, it fits in all of my backpacks very comfortably. It slides in and out easily. In fact, once it's in my backpack, I barely notice it because of how light it is. Uh, I mean, compared to say something like, I don't know, the 13 inch iPad Pro, once you put that iPad Pro in its magic keyboard case, it's actually heavier than this 14 inch laptop, which is nuts. I mean, I've been using this at night, whether I'm sitting up or laying in bed, and the experience has been very comfortable due to its lightweight design and form factor. Asus really knocked it out of the park with the ZenBook A14. The port selection on the A14 is pretty good. It's definitely not the most out there, but it's far from the least. On one side, we have a USB type A 3.2 Gen 2 port. On the other side, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, two USB 4 type C ports that are capable of 40 gigabytes bits per second, and then an HDMI 2.1 port. The ZenBook A14 features a brand new hinge, so I can demonstrate it here. It's called the Easy Lift Hinge, and it allows you to open it up with a single finger. The laptop doesn't tilt or shift, it remains on the surface, and it provides more stability to the display, giving you overall just easier operation of opening and closing the laptop. It works really well. The keyboard on the A14 is very comfortable to type on. It has dish-shaped keycaps and it provides 1.3 millimeters of key travel. We also have three-stage backlighting that can be controlled with a single button. And we have a Windows Copilot button down here so you can quickly launch your Copilot Assistant. It's also very quiet. Here's a quick example. The keyboard also has an anti-fingerprint coating, and I think they've done a great job with this coating because I hardly notice any fingerprints on my keycaps. Moving down to the trackpad, we have a very large edge-to-edge -edge trackpad here that's very responsive. It uses Windows Precision drivers. The trackpad also supports different gestures. So over on the right-hand side, you can adjust the brightness, and over on the left-hand side, you can adjust the volume. And then it also has media playback controls built into the gestures on the trackpad as well. All right, so now let's talk about the display on the ZenBook A14 because it's absolutely beautiful. They call this the Asus Lumina OLED. It's a 16 by 10 and 60 hertz full HD and 1920 by 1200 display. And it features a nano edge design, which basically means that it goes edge to edge and that the bezels are very slim. Obviously, you get all of the OLED benefits with this display, including infinity contrast ratio, true blacks, vibrant colors, you get VESA Display HDR 600 True Black certification, and up to 600 nits of HDR peak brightness. Not only that, but when it comes to color accuracy, ASUS claims 100% DCI-P3 color gamut coverage using the factory calibration and customizable color modes via my ASUS. When it comes to eye care and longevity, it does feature a two Rylan low blue light certification, there's a built-in eye care mode, and ASUS OLED care features in order to prevent burn-in with warranty coverage. I mean, honestly, specs aside, I absolutely love the display on the A14. I do wish it had a higher refresh rate or a touchscreen, but you know what? This laptop wasn't aimed at that. This is not a gaming laptop. This is not a two-in-one. It's not meant to fold back and become a tablet, so I'm okay with it. Plus, they needed to keep costs down. 
Overall, the display is beautiful. For a 1080p panel, ultra sharp, it's very vibrant, tons of contrast here. I've edited photos on it, I've watched movies and shows and YouTube videos, and overall it just provides an excellent viewing experience. The A14 also features dual super linear speakers with Dolby Atmos support, and it has support for Snapdragon sound technology. They sound pretty good, here's a quick listen for yourself. At the top of the display, we have our full HD webcam that also supports Windows Hello login, which is always nice to see. Asus uses AI to enhance the webcam quality as well as the microphone quality, so here's a quick demo of that. Okay, so this is the dedicated webcam test. I'm in pretty decent lighting. It's in 1080p at the highest quality possible, and I'm using the onboard mics. Both should be taking advantage of Asus's AI in order to improve the quality, so let me know what you think. All right, so let's talk about specs and performance for a minute. The A14 model that I have here is being powered by the Snapdragon X Plus processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. Now that storage can be upgraded. All you have to do is pop off the back panel and that will give you access to the NVMe slot. You'll also notice the 70 watt hour battery back here as well. Now Asus advertises about 32 hours of battery life when viewing video offline. However, in my use case, I haven't been able to achieve anywhere close to this. It's been about 24 to 25 hours if I'm taking it easy on this computer, but if I'm really using it, I'm getting about nine to 11 hours of casual use while connected to the internet. The A14 also features easy USB-C charge support, which allows you to bounce between standard USB-C charging as well as PD charging, and they include a 65 watt adapter in the box. My experience using the Asus ZenBook A14 daily has been very good. I mean, you have to understand that this laptop does have its limitations when it comes to performance. It's not a gaming laptop. The 60 hertz display should tell you that immediately. This is also not a laptop that you're going to be doing a lot of content creation on. It doesn't have that powerful of a processor. The Snapdragon X Plus is capable, just not in every single area. So you're not going to be editing 4K video on this laptop, but you can edit 1080p, whether in Premiere or CapCut. I've edited several photos, 60 megapixel raw photos from the Leica Q3, and the performance has been excellent, including exporting those photos. When it comes to multitasking and productivity work, this is a great laptop for all of that. Going back to gaming for a second, if you're playing games that are not demanding on the processor, such as Rocket League or a few others, you should be fine. However, I found that the best experience is when using something like Game Pass and just streaming games. You're going to get the best performance that way. Uh, personally, I was playing like uh, the new Doom. I was playing Killer Instinct and it functioned fine. Of course, you do have to have a steady Wi-Fi connection for that. And it's not really taking advantage of the internals of the computer which is why the experience is so good, but that's like a cheat code to game on this. However, it still has a 60 hertz display, so it's still not technically a gaming laptop. And if you're just looking for a great all-around ultra-thin and lightweight notebook that you can throw in any bag, whether you're a student, a business person, or just looking for a great companion laptop to type scripts on and do some emails and documentation, you really can't go wrong with this. I'm telling you, the performance in that aspect is great. Okay, so I guess the last thing that we need to discuss here is software. So let's go ahead and dive into Windows and I'll do a few live demos of the brand new Copilot AI features and how Asus is taking advantage of Windows Recall, the new and improved Windows Search, as well as Click To Do. Now just know you don't have to use Windows Recall. You have to opt in to use it. And once you opt in, you can always tweak the settings. So let me show you that now. If we click on the Windows Recall button over here and then go into more Recall settings, you can turn it off right here inside of the settings. All you have to do is go under recall and snapshots. Another way that you can find this option is to hit the Windows key and then do a search for Windows recall and you'll see a pop up right here, recall and snapshots. So if by disabling save snapshots, you more or less turn off Windows recall. And if you wanna tweak it a little bit further, but still keep those snapshots, you can make sure that filter sensitive information is turned on as well as add any apps that you don't want Windows Recall taking snapshots in. So say you have a password manager, you can add that app. Now to go one step further, you can do the same thing with websites in supported browsers like Chrome, Edge, Firefox, so on and so forth. So for instance, I have my email, which is through Gmail, as well as my bank, and it will not take snapshots when I'm using those two websites. So it's just a few different ways that you can really fine tune the recall experience to make 
make it a little bit more private and put your mind at ease. Now you're probably wondering, what is Recall, in case you've never heard of it? Recall runs in the background on your Windows PC and it's constantly saving snapshots. So that way, in case you forget something, you can go back and locate it. So it gives you a timeline when you pull up the Recall interface right here, where you can just browse through everything that you've done. Um, so you can see I've done some photo editing, I was in Paint, uh, played some Xbox games, and you can search your history, which is really cool. So I can type in Rivian, and I purchased a Rivian recently, and it will pull up all of that information right here. Next up, we have Click To Do. And Click To Do is useful for gathering information on the fly very quickly. And you can also uh, grab images and then edit those images. Let me just show you. So if I pull up Chrome here and say I was selling a Sony A1 on Facebook Marketplace and I wanted to grab a stock image, I can find one here. I can hold down the Windows key and then hit Q. It will pull up Click To Do. I can select that image and then I can tap blur background with photos, which also gives me the option to remove the background in photos using AI. So I can remove the background, you can see. Now I can save it and just use that photo. I can replace the background with say red or black or a different color, or I can blur the original background. Additionally, I can apply a, a style to it. So fantasy, anime, surrealism, cyberpunk, renaissance. These do take some time to process. They're more for like people or places I don't know, they're, they're very artsy, probably more for the younger generation, as you can see. Um, but nonetheless, they are fun and they're free. So that's kind of cool. More importantly, though, if you're grabbing an image from online, chances are it's lower resolution. So this is 524 by 439. You have a free AI upscaler here that can go all the way up to eight times. So that turns a 524 by 439 into a 4192 by 3512. That is a huge huge upscale so we'll see how well it does go ahead and enhance the image and keep in mind we are working with a uh, some type of style here where it turned sony into sammy so we'll zoom in you see this is before and that's after for a free upscaler that looks pretty good Let's see before you can see all the noise and artifacts here and then after it really cleans them up. So again, for a free AI upscaler that's built into the Photos app, that's pretty good. Now you can also do a few other things with Click To Do. So if I go back here, Command Q, and then tap that photo again, I can do a visual search with Bing if I wanna learn more about this specific camera. So if I do that, it's more or less like a reverse Google image search. So you can see it just pulls up more articles and images. I can also, click the image and then drop it into Paint instead of Photos. So if you're more comfortable inside of Microsoft Paint, you could do that. So you can also use it inside of Windows Recall. So if I pull up Windows Recall and then go under my history and we'll type Rivian and say I was doing, uh, gathering some information on the new truck that I was going to buy. So these are all the specs of it right here. I can use Click To Do to highlight all of this text and then drop it into a document. I can create a bullet list. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. You see Rivian offers various customizable packages, R1T base performance, L cap granite paint. It's just giving me a bullet list and summary of everything on this page. I can also bring it into notes. I can rewrite it if I was writing an email, or I can search the web to find out if there's any other Rivians in different colors that have these same exact specs. So. Very useful. The last thing that I wanna show you is the new Windows search, which is now powered by AI. You can search three different ways. You can use the search bar down here in the taskbar. You can hit the Windows key here and that will pull up search. Or you can go into File Manager and then search right here. And you could tell if you have the new Windows search because you'll see like two little pink stars around the magnifying glass. And when you tap on the search bar, you'll get like this colored line right here. So if I do a search for baby, you see it will pull up pictures of my son because it's scanning the image with AI. If I type in baby smiling, we can narrow that down even further. If I do a search for say camera, now we have documents and images with cameras in them, such as this one right here. The new search is really, really cool. I will say this though. If it's not working for you immediately, give it time because your computer needs to index and it can take a while for that to happen. 
Um, so like even right now, I'm doing these searches and I've been doing them over and over for this video and I'm getting better and better results. So over time, you should see the search kind of narrow and fine tune things and give you better results. If you search down here in the taskbar search bar, it gives you different results. So for instance, if I type in baby down here, you can see it did pull up an image, but it's also going to search the app store. It's going to search online. It's gonna give you a bunch more results versus what's specifically on your computer. Same thing can be said if you pull up the Windows search bar here. If I type in blue, you can see once again, now it's searching through the settings as well as giving me choices for apps, documents, web settings, and folders. So many different ways to search for things on your computer now. And thanks to Copilot and AI, it should be a little bit easier to find things since you can use natural language. All right, so let's wrap up this video with pricing and a few final thoughts. The Asus ZenBook A14 with the Snapdragon X Plus processor is a great laptop, especially in this Zabriskie colorway. I absolutely love it. At the time of this video, this laptop retails for a thousand bucks, but you're gonna be able to pick this up on sale for around $800 throughout the year. So make sure to click on the links in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can see up-to-date pricing. For $800, this thing is a steal. You're getting great ROI on this, whether you're a student, a businessman, or just looking for an ultra thin and lightweight laptop that you can bring with you everywhere to check your emails, document, edit some photos, just to have a great ultra book that is super portable and is not going to weigh you down. I absolutely love this thing. I can't recommend it enough. And if I was in the market for something in this form factor, this would be the one that I would pick up. Let me know what you guys think of the A14 and down below, and let me know what you think of this colorway. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.